The big release for the month of March for the Nintendo Switch is Kirby Star Allies. Now, Kirby Star Allies look like a return to form for the Kirby series. Kirby games have been pretty much these sort of interesting things lately on home consoles where they've been heavily relying on gimmicks. It wasn't this classic 2D platforming that we've all known to love and appreciate with Kirby. It was all about gimmicks. Games like Rainbow Curse and things like that had you using a stylus to control Kirby. And while those were fine games, in my opinion, Opinion, I prefer the more traditional ones. Things like Kirby Planet Robobot was a really good game on the 3DS. So I was interested to see how Kirby Star Allies would end up being. We saw a release of a demo for this game on the Nintendo Switch eShop, which I covered in a video, and I liked it. There were some things I liked about it and some things I didn't like about it, but for the most part, I thought it was a pretty solid experience. Well, now the full version of the game is out, and I kind of like the game, but there's one big problem with Kirby Star Allies that really holds it back in my opinion. What is that one big problem and what do I think about the game as a whole? Let's get into it in my review of Kirby Star Allies for the Nintendo Switch. Hey, RGT85, hey Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards. So if you're playing Kirby Star Allies for the story of the game, you're going to be pretty disappointed because the story is pretty paper thin, as is with most Kirby games and 2D platformers in general, it seems like, especially ones from Nintendo. Basically, Kirby and his friends are hanging out and all of a sudden some dark hearts come across the land and it's like, ah, oh, dark hearts, these are bad things, we gotta get rid of them. And then we go and try to rid the world of the dark hearts. And that's pretty much the story of the game. It's simplistic. It's sort of just there and I didn't really care about the story but in these games I don't really care about the story if you're playing a Kirby game for the story you probably have some sort of problems because I don't know that's just kind of weird but the gameplay is what Kirby is all about and Kirby Star Allies bring some interesting things to the table because Kirby is not alone in his adventure at any time we can have up to three different partners and I always recommend using up to three different partners that aid him on his quest and basically the way the partner system works is you throw a hard at these people and you throw a heart and then they join your team and it actually leads to some pretty cool situations because depending on what allies you acquire depends on what sort of upgrades you could get so if you have like a sword and you acquire a flame based ally the ally can then charge up that sword and make it a flame sword or if it's a water based ally you can make it a water based sword or an electric one you can make it an electric sword so there's a lot of cool different things that go on within that and the fact that you could get up to four three different characters on your team as well leads to some pretty interesting situations and there's a good variety of characters to choose from as well on your quest you can make some really interesting teams and some of these teams work better in situations than others so if you have like an ice enemy obviously you'd want to use fire based characters and if you have a fire enemy you want to use water or ice based things and those things really play into the game as well it's pretty interesting how many different you know unique character options you could select with Star Allies. Now, the one problem that is sort of there is that this game does not feature any online play. So if you want to play with someone, you have to play locally. And at first I was kind of a bit bummed by that because I figured the AI would be pretty weak, but the AI is actually rather strong in this game and sort of negates the need to have online component in the game. I would have loved to have seen an online component, but it's not really an issue to me because the AI is so strong, unlike in a game like Payday 2, where the AI is pretty damn dumb. So your teammates actually help you out a lot. They know how to react to situations. If there's a puzzle where you know you need a certain character to access a certain thing, they know to do it. They will recognize that they need to do it and go and then do it. So I like that about the game. They really took time to craft the AI of your teammates to be really smart and that's something you don't see in a lot of games. So kudos on that aspect of the game. Now, of course, one of the big things about the game is the team play, and it sort of plays into how the game plays as well, because there'll be times when you'll need all four characters to do a certain thing. So there'll be situations where you have to, you know, use your teammates to form a bridge so that a certain character holding a key can make it across. There's things where you form like a friend circle and you just run rampant through the level and just like a big wheel just tearing everything down. It's pretty cool how they did this aspect of the game. I think they did the 
gameplay aspect pretty well as far as how you use your teammates and the whole team-based system. I would definitely like to see them expand upon this in a future game. Now, as far as the graphics are concerned, I think the game looks pretty good. It runs at about 1080p, 30 frames per second in dock mode, and it runs very smoothly. There's no frame rate issues or anything. I know a lot of people would have liked to have seen 60p. Me personally, you know, it gets the job done. It looks good. Everything has a nice aesthetic to it. The characters are pretty highly detailed. You know, there's animation in their faces as well. The enemies are interesting. Some of the bosses are really, really cool and varied, especially the final boss. That was actually a pretty big surprise and how different it was in terms of both aesthetics and in gameplay. I really enjoyed that final boss. And it's just a lot to look at, a lot to see, and a lot to see within the levels. Now, as far as the levels are concerned, it's not just a situation of you going from left to right and completing the level. Level. There is a ton of unlockable stuff in this game that helps increase the replay value of the game because the game itself is pretty short. If you blaze through the story mode, it could be done in about four to five hours. But the real thing about Kirby Star Allies is sort of going back and finding all these hidden things. There's things such as hidden levels. In each level, it seems like there is a big red button and you have to find this big red button and push this big red button. If you do that, then you unlock another additional level to check out within the game. So that's pretty cool. There's also so puzzle pieces. Now the puzzle pieces basically um, create different sorts of artwork with different sorts of celebration scenes. So if you want to 100% complete the game, there's actually a lot to do and a lot to see. Don't let the initial sort of short story mode get you down because there's actually additional gameplay modes that are available either at the start or more that open up at the end of the game as well that you can check out and they're pretty fun. They definitely extend the life of the game. It's not just a short single player experience. There's a lot more to do and a lot more to see when you finish the game. And of course, if you want 100% complete the game, access the secret levels and hidden levels and whatnot and acquire all the puzzle pieces. So that's pretty good in my opinion as well. You know, it's not just a super short game like a lot of people had feared. There's a lot to do and a lot to see. The sound in the game is very well crafted as well. There's remix Kirby tracks. There's all sorts of cool stuff in there that I really enjoyed. The atmosphere is nice as well. The atmospheric sounds, sound effects are good. Everything is pretty top notch in the presentation department. The gameplay, like I said, is very strong. The controls are very smooth. So what the hell is the big problem? It sounds like a good game, doesn't it? It sounds like there's a decent amount of content. It looks good, it plays good. What's the problem? Holy crap, this might be the easiest game I've ever played in my life. And it's just so easy. And I understand that this is for younger audiences. I understand that they were going for the younger gamers in this game, but I think even younger gamers are going to have just a super easy time with this game. There were times where I'd be fighting a boss and I wouldn't even do anything. The AI teammates would take out the boss for me and I would just be like, wow, okay. I think I died in the single player story mode about five times total five times total and three of those were just platforming issues for some reason when we were in this big circle the friend circle or what whatever it's called i would just fail on a jump for some reason and i was like oh okay whatever i think i actually died in the gameplay like twice and two and both of those times were actually on the final boss because i kept losing my teammates and it was just becoming a little bit more difficult but good god you get so many one-ups every little star that appears on the map if it's a gold star it's worth like a one coin if it's a red one, it's worth more. Green ones are worth more. Every time you get 100, you get an extra life. There are one-ups all over the levels in these games. Like every time you turn around, you're getting a one-up. You find a one-up, you unlock a one-up, or you get enough gold stars or stars in general to get a one-up. I finished the game with 65 lives. 65 lives! I never felt at any point in time any sort of challenge. And I guess maybe the challenge is finding all of the puzzle pieces and finding all of the unlockables within the level. Because there are certain puzzle pieces and there are certain areas that you have to access with certain characters. So if those characters are not in your party, you're gonna have to go back to those areas and then use the, the appropriate character to unlock that thing, unlock that secret. So I guess maybe that's where the challenge comes in, but it's just so easy. The fact that I beat it in one day. I picked up the game at 12 o'clock on Sunday afternoon and I pretty much beat it in two sittings. And the only reason it was two sittings was because I wanted to take a quick nap. It took me about five hours. Like I said, I didn't unlock all the hidden levels. I didn't even play all the hidden levels. I would unlock some, but I just wanted to experience the story mode, the real meat and potatoes of the game. And of course, some of the extra modes that you unlock at the end of the game. But I just felt so disappointed. When you look at a game like Donkey Kong Country Tropical 
Michael Freeze. Like, that has the same sort of aesthetic. That has the same sort of mood, except it's just really, really difficult. And then you have this game on the opposite end of the spectrum that's just so easy. If they would have included a hard mode or maybe a difficulty adjuster sort of thing, you know, like an easy mode, a normal mode, and a hard mode, that would have helped so much because as it stands, it's just a super, super easy game. Now, should you pick up Kirby Star Allies? I think if you have local friends to play with that like Kirby games, then sure, you know, the multiplayer is pretty solid. If you have younger kids in your household, then sure. I paid $40 for this game because I had a $20 GameStop gift card. And I definitely feel like I will get 40 hours or $40 worth of enjoyment out of this game now that I have access to the extra stuff at the end of the game and going back and finding the hidden levels. It's just the problem is the game is so easy it feels like you're on autopilot half the time it feels like you don't even have to do stuff half of the time the graphics are great the sound is great the unique characteristics of having all these different characters that give you different abilities and being able to team up is great it's just the difficulty is so freaking low that it makes the game sort of hard to recommend so if you're not you know looking for a, a tough experience if you're not looking if you're just looking for something casual to play you know in your spare time for an hour or two kirby star allies might be a decent pickup but if you're looking for something challenging you're definitely going to want to play something else because the challenge is pretty much non-existent in this game and unfortunately i feel like it holds the game back but those are just my thoughts on kirby star allies i am happy that i picked it up you know the fact that it was only 40 dollars definitely felt a lot better if i paid 60 dollars for it I might have been a little bit more disappointed. So let me know in the comments section down below if you picked up Kirby Star Allies and what you think of the game. Did you think the difficulty was too low or did you think it was pretty decent? And like I said, the final boss battle, really, really cool. I really enjoyed that. Thank you for checking out this video. As always, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you can stay up to date with everything going on in the world of RGT85. Check out the description box down below for all sorts of links to different things like t-shirts, websites, social media, Patreon, and I will catch you guys on the next video. I love all you guys. Later. RGT, 85, RGT.